So at number 11 then from the 2015 New Hire Paper 1, a 10 mark question. Two parts, part A. T, negative 2, negative 5, lies in the circumference of the circle. What's the equation of the tangent to the circle passing through T? Four marks. Now that's a standard. Now you don't need the diagram for this, but here's one. Anyway, there's the circle. Now you know the centre would be the opposite of these, negative 8, negative 2. So the centre's at negative 8, negative 2. So this point must be to the right of it, it's only 2 back rather than 8 back, and below it, 5 below compared to 2 below, so it's somewhere down here, which means that if it's in this quarter, it must have an upward gradient, this tangent. And that, of course, is the point negative 2, negative 5. So the question is, what's the equation of this line? Now, you didn't actually need that. You would just start off by saying, well, what's the centre of this circle? The centre is going to be What's been subtracted there? What's been subtracted there? Negative 8, negative 2. So the gradient of the radius will be y2 minus y1, negative 5, take away negative 2, over x2, x1, negative 2, take away negative 8. So that's going to be negative 3 upon 6. So the gradient of the radius will be negative a half. The way that you find the equation of this line will be, you need a point on it, we've got the point, negative 2, negative 5, you need its gradient, you'll get that gradient from the gradient of the radius. The radius meets the tangent at right angles, which means knowing the gradient of the radius, the gradient of the tangent will be the perpendicular one. So the gradient of the tangent will be 2. Now, as far as the marking scheme is concerned, that was the first mark. That was the second mark for getting the gradient of the radius. And that was the third mark for getting the gradient of the tangent, the perpendicular. Now it's just a case of feed it together and there's the fourth mark. So you'll be using y minus b equals mx minus a to get the tangent. So y minus the y coordinate passing through this point. I'll just jump straight in with plus 5 equals the gradient, 2 times x minus the x-coordinate, going with plus 2, tidy this up, 2x plus 4, but take away 5, 2x minus 1, and there's the fourth mark. Now, same as before, that's what they've got down as the preferred answer, but you'll get this mark if you simply leave it in that form. But you're going to be using this again anyway in the second part of the question. Now, part B. This tangent <clears throat> is also a tangent to the parabola with this equation. If that's the case, and there's another condition here that you should notice, P is greater than 3, determine the value of P for 6 marks. Well, there should be the one obvious approach to use to this, but there is another way it can be done. But the standard way would be to say, if that line is a tangent to this parabola, then there should be one point of intersection. So go ahead and find the intersection. I'll we'll call that equation 1, that's equation 2. To find an intersection, you would substitute one in the other. I'll put that one in this one. So it would read 2x minus 1 would equal negative 2x squared plus px plus 1 minus p. Now that will be a quadratic equation that should have just one solution, or rather one pair of equal roots. So first of all, find that quadratic. So bringing it all over to one side, I'd have two lots of x squared. And then you've got a 2x minus a px, a p, minus 1 minus another one minus 2 equals 0. It is a quadratic, it's only got the three types of terms, x squared, x and constants, but tidy up so you can see the coefficients of those three quite clearly. So it's 2x squared plus 2 minus px plus p minus 2 equals 0. So as far as the marks are concerned, substituting them to find the point of intersection was one mark, and tidying it up into the quadratic was the second mark. Now the next part would be to make a statement. If it's a tangent, that means that the discriminant should equal zero. 
Now that alone isn't a mark. Knowing to use the discriminants a mark, we'd have to identify the parts. So putting that in, b squared would be 2 minus p squared minus 4 times 2 times p minus 2 should equal 0. Now there's like one and a half marks here so far. Once I've simplified this down to another quadratic, then we can mention these marks. There was one mark for knowing to use a discriminant and identifying a, b and c from these parts here. Either implied, simply by putting it down, or if you like, by putting them down at the side if you wished. But they're mentioned here quite clearly. That was sufficient according to the Martin scheme. They need to be stated separately. But I'll need to tidy this up. So what's the square in that bracket? Square the first, twice the product, square the last. And for this one, minus 8 times that, plus that'll be 16 equals 0. Almost there. P squared minus 12P plus 20 equals 0. Now the two marks come out of this. That's certainly the second of the two marks, and the first one was roundabout here. Knowing to use the discriminant and putting in the correct values for the A, B and the C. So it would be roundabout there. So, so far that's four out of the six marks. The first two for creating the appropriate quadratic equation in X for the intersection. The second two for creating the appropriate discriminant equation, which also turned out to be a quadratic, in order to have the condition for a tangency, that the discriminant should be zero for equal roots. And then there's two marks just for solving this now. And well, that's quite a simple little bit for the final two marks, because it's just monic. There's only a coefficient of one for the squared term. And that quite simply says, multiply to give 20, add to give 12, that's two and 10. The larger one should be negative, that one says they're both the same, so now I've got two answers. P equals 2, or P equals 10. But there was an initial condition, P had to be greater than 3. So, final answer, P equals 10. Reason, P had to be greater than 3. The factorisation was one mark. And the final answer, P is 10, is the final and sixth mark. Well, that would have been the standard way, the obvious way to do it, but there is another way that was mentioned in the marking scheme, and that was this, down as method two. That's to say, if that line is a tangent to that parabola, which is whatever it looks like, if that line is a tangent to that parabola, whoops, missed it, then at that point, the gradient of the line must be the same as the gradient to the parabola at that point. It's derivative. So you could equate the derivative of this to the gradient of that line. But that's not sufficient, because there will be some point in the parabola which has a gradient, which is the same as the gradient of a line, but that doesn't guarantee they're the tangent, it just says they're parallel. So you'd further have to say, and the point would have to lie in both of them, so you'd still have to find an intersection, because you want to show that the point belongs to them both. So, doing it that way anyway, you'd say this. Well, from one, the gradient of that line is two, and from this part, the gradient at the parabola would be given by the derivative, and that would be negative 4x plus p. And if it's a tangent, that means that negative 4x plus p should equal 2. Or rearranging that for p, p would equal 4x plus 2. Now, obviously, that's not an answer for p, because I've not fulfilled all the conditions yet. Now, that would be a mark for differentiating it, and that would be a mark for equating the gradients. Four to go. The next part would have to be, right, okay, they'd have to have the same gradient, but they'd also have to have the same, share the same point. So I've still got to go ahead and find a point of intersection. So we're still going to have to find the intersection. So substitute one in two. So I've got 2x, obviously it's going to be the same thing, minus 1 equals negative 2x squared plus px plus 1 minus p. Though the only difference is this time, I know what p is. I've got an expression for p in terms of x. So I can get an equation in x that I can solve to find this point of intersection. Well, 2x minus 1 would be negative 2x squared plus, and p is equal to this. 
4x plus 2 times x plus 1 minus 4x plus 2. Now there was one mark I should have said for going ahead to find the point of intersection. But you're not going to get the next mark until you've tidied this lot up. So I'll just multiply it out first. Negative 2x squared plus x times that. 4x squared plus 2x plus 1 minus 4x minus 2. Now, without having to tidy it, there's quite a few things that can be eliminated just from the balance. 2x minus 1, 2x, and those two make minus 1. So they go. And that just leaves you with this part, which is 2x squared minus 4x. 0 equals 2x squared minus 4x. Now that gets you the next mark. So that's 4 so far. 2 for the gradient business, saying that the gradients must be the same. 2 for an equation leading to the point of intersection. Solving that, well, common factor of 2x. 2x times x minus 2 should equal 0, leading to x equals 0, or x equals 2. It's getting closer. That was a mark. One to go now for finding p. So now we go back to this. But there's two cases. I've run out of space. So I've got the top here. So we've got x equals 0 means p should be 4 times 0 plus 2, which would just be 2. That's no use. x equals 2 means p should be 4 times 2 plus 2, which equals 10, and that's fine. So the answer is p equals 10, since p had to be greater than 3. And that was the final mark, doing it by that method. Quite clearly, I think, you'd have gone for the first obvious method. Substitute them to find the point of intersection, and then use the discriminant, knowing that the discriminant should be 0 for equal roots for a tangent.